Hi, everyone. I'm Neil Gornflow, Executive Director of Shareable. In the next uh, 15 minutes, I'll share some ideas about sharing cities in a post-COVID world and break the idea out of its past conceptual frames, or at least try to. Uh, for instance, thinking about sharing cities as merely an engagement with the platform economy or sharing as a behavior. And um, you know, in doing so, I hope to expand the sharing cities paradigm, if you will, um, so that it can better enable cities to realize their potential for global transition. And I think cities must change in, in several fundamental ways to realize that potential. Uh, for instance, they, I think they must become uh, more self-governing, more independent from nation states, uh, more self-sufficient financially and materially, more democratic, their, their residents much more engaged in governing urban resources and everyday commoning, and better able to cooperate and share resources with each other. I'll expand on this vision a bit and, uh, and then share five ways cities can head down this path. So let's start with a bit of context. Uh, while the growing instability of our biosphere and, and global civilization are, are worrying, to say the least, uh, the prospect of a rise in city power is an exciting silver lining because it is in self-governing city-states that civilization has historically been born and also reborn. Uh, to par paraphrase historian Jeffrey Park in his book, Sovereign City, Renaissance can happen without city-states. They go hand in hand. Uh, this isn't such a stretch as it might sound at first as cities have always been the cradle of civilization. Some thinkers have gone so far as to say that city-states represent civilization at its best. However, the rights and powers of cities remain too subordinate to global capital and nation states to truly take the mantle of leadership in global transition. While cities have a disproportionate amount of economic power, they often lack an equivalent amount of political power. And many of the most powerful nation states, including the US, legal um, legacy political systems haven't caught up with the reality of our new global urban civilization. Moreover, the pandemic has shown how dangerous this is in an era of rising globally networked populism and authoritarian national regimes. In the US, Brazil, and elsewhere, there's been a shocking amount of conflict between local, regional, and national governments in, in their pandemic response. Unfortunately, citizens have paid with their lives and livelihoods for the added confusion, delay, and lack of coordination this has caused. Local and regional governments have often taken the safer, more scientifically sound courses of action to manage the pandemic. This isn't surprising as they tend to be more pragmatic and uh, accountable to their constituents, not to mention you know, less ideological. Uh, the pandemic not only shows that cities need more independence from global capital and nation states, it shows the opportunity that cities have to enhance their global leadership I take it one step further and say that they also have a responsibility to enhance their power as they are one of the most important love levers for global transition. You know, cities are already leading the way on a range of critical, critical issues, you know, climate change being a prime example, yet their progress is not yet fast or thorough enough. I doubt that cities will be able to realize their potential as agents of global trans is transition within existing legal and political arrangements, but rather will need to work around, change, or even contest them. Cities will likely need to redefine the relationship to the residents, to each other, and to their nation state host in order to realize their potential for, for transition. This will need to be a redefinition that leverages cities' soft power, their culture and economic power, on the way to winning more hard power, the legal and political sort. That said, such a redefinition can't leave rural areas behind as cities have done in the recent past. Um, it's worth considering combining the ancient Greek idea of the polis with newer ideas like bioregionalism and regenerative development, which put place, social, environmental, and cultural values center stage. In this context, 
we can stretch our imagination and think about how cities of today can fight COVID-19 and other shared challenges into the future. Here are five ideas to consider, just a few of many footstones that need to be laid toward a better future. So number one, municipal finance. Um, you know, how can the huge amount of money that cities control be better leveraged for transition? For instance, cities purchasing power, the massive balances they keep at commercial banks, which commercial banks leverage to create credit. Cities could do the same, and some do. Um, the huge pensions they control and more. Such innovations like public banking, participatory budgeting, local purchasing and pension, pension investment strategies can put the power of the public purse to more public benefit and enhance the soft power of cities. I wonder too about how cities could work together to create new cross-border financial institutions that would enable them, for instance, to amass their capital and create their own credit, exchange surpluses through a mutual credit system, create digital currencies, and uh, start funds that invest in local businesses. As it is, cities are now even more strapped than before the pandemic. In some cases, national governments have made the situation worse by stinting on or delaying aid to cities. Cities would do well to internally fund transition as much as possible and you know, lessen their financial dependence on national governments and otherwise create new commons friendly circuits of money. Okay, number two, platform cooperatives. Much of the platform econ economy is centered in cities. And what ways can cities work together to foster or create locally controlled wealth spreading platform businesses? Why not create platform businesses on a franchise model with shared ownership on a local level and shared infrastructure, marketing, and branding on a global level? There's no better time as technology barriers are minimal. Technology frameworks exist to quickly and cheaply build platforms. The key challenges, is, uh, challenges are Governance, scaling, and design, not technology. Cities have played nothing but defense up to this point, and uh, perhaps it's high time for them to play offense. Number three, local production, shared global supply chains. Cities can lead a strategic retreat from an unsustainable peak of production and consumption by localizing and mutualizing the local economy, yet, um, establishing shared global supply chain chains. There may be a prosperous way down to borrow from the title of a book that applies the principles of ecosystem ecology to energy descent. And in that book, um, it really focuses on, you know, how to not to stop a collapse or slow a collapse, but how to organize a collapse and benefit from that organized collapse. Open source models deployed within and between cities would be a key feature of such a strategy. Michelle Bowen's concept of cosmo-local production applies here, which in, which in short is about lo locally controlled production using globally shared knowledge. This along with shared global supply chains would increase food security, prevent shortages of, of key material and improve disaster response. Okay, number four, grassroots mutual aid. Pandemic created great need. People responded with an unprecedented wave of grassroots mutual aid. This was a global phenomenon involving millions of ordinary people. And um, I think this is an opportunity to make this high level of citizen engagement a more permanent feature of city life. And maybe a platform strategy can be combined um, with this. Number five, infrastructure for sharing. Um, Seoul and many other cities have experience with sharing neighborhoods, urban villages, co-housing, co-living, and other forms of urban intentional community. COVID-19 also has cities around the world rethinking the use of, of streets, parks, and public space to give people more space in cities. This experience has profound implications in the post-COVID world because while we tend to take them for granted and over overemphasize the role of individual behavior change. Our social networks, physical environments, and more, our total context have more influence on our behavior than maybe anything else. So how can this experience be expanded through city spatial organization, built environment, 
and platform footprint to foster more widespread and daily commenting? And how can it create a kind of total context for commenting? All right, just to wrap here, I'll, I'll close with a thought. Um, we live in a many people world with different languages, cultures, religions, and ideologies. Um, you know, these differences have been dangerously heightened recently. This, this really scares me. Um, and, uh, uh, but yet, it's, it's our, sh we have an opportunity here. It's in our shared needs and visions grounded in the places that we love where our differences have the best chance to be reconciled. This takes us beyond divisive issues into the realm of what's possible together. Cities can walk this path together as stronger, more independent entities, but hand in helping hand. So with that, I'll, I'll, I'll end and just thank you for listening. <laughs>